and uh, welcome to our Heavenly Parent Holy Community Oceania Hundoke with Reverend Yutaki Yamada. This being the eighth day of our second 40 day condition, being Wednesday, the 31st of March, 19th of February, in the ninth year of Chongo Guk. So, welcome everyone, and let's begin by offering a bow to our Heavenly Parent and True Parents. And let's recite uh, family pledge in Korean and English. Thank you. Kajon men se pal. Choni guk chuin, uri kajongen, cham sanangul chunshimago, choni guk shidel majahayo. 절대 신앙, 절대 사랑, 절대 복종으로 신인의 일체 이상을 이루어 지산 천국과 전산 천국의 해방권과 석방권을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. Family pledge number eight. Our family, the owner of Chongilguk, pledges having entered the era of Chongilguk to achieve the ideal of God and human beings united in love through absolute faith, absolute love, and absolute obedience, and to perfect the realm of liberation and complete freedom in the kingdom of God on earth and in heaven by centering on true love. And I'd like to ask uh, Jacinta Derbyshire if she could uh, offer the opening prayer. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Heavenly Father. Thank you much that we can share across Zoom across the whole of our Pacific region, Asia Pacific region. And um, uh, thank you so much that you've revealed yourself to us and we really want to be able to substantiate your dream in this world, in our lives, in reality. So, yeah. Um, I pray this day will be a great day for you and for us and accomplishing one step closer to the dream and reality of your world. I pray this in the name of Ian and Jacinta Derbyshire, Central Blessed Family. Adieu. Adieu. Thank you. Um, <laughs> let's uh, welcome uh, Reverend Yutaka uh, in offering Hundok for us today. Thank you. Good morning, our brothers and sisters. Thank you for coming today's Fundoke in the Oceania for second 40 days. I really appreciate your chanson and your heart and also your love to gather together and meet together in the beginning of the day. And we can offer together our heart to our heavenly parents and to parents. I'm really grateful. Thank you very much. And today's last day of March, March 31st. So how was this one month about March? Time is really fast and each single day and each single month are we developing from yesterday, today we developed than yesterday or tomorrow is better than today. So each moment we will try to invest, develop and love and share and we will offer the victory. So reflect our March one month and we can see and we can prepare for the next month of April. Let's pray well and also prepare well. And this Sunday, uh, April 4, Trimada is preparing about the peace festival. So this peace festival purpose is to welcoming the new guest and also welcoming the, our blessed family or our members who are not coming so much or who are having distance recently. So welcoming all our blessed families and new members 
and all members to come together. So this is this week the uh, peace festival and Dramada also share or all event was shared talking about a decent program and decent activity and also important uh, meaningful contents. So please also invite your friend, invite also all of our friends to join our Sunday Peace Festival. So Korean time, 10 o'clock. And now Australia will be changed the time, summer time to normal time. What do you call this time, summer time? So this daylight from this- saving. Daylight saving. A daylight saving. So daylight saving time period will be end, so change. So I think Kundoke time period, maybe also Australia side is not changing, but another island nation side will be changed. So from Sunday, please be careful. One hour. So now six o'clock Sydney. And I think we, uh, New Zealand is two hours difference. But this become the one hour different, right? So please check the time. So Sunday will be changing. So Sunday service time and this program 10 a.m. Korean time. So 11. 11 a.m. Australia time. And please also calculate each nation. It's four backwards. And our Fundoke time also same. Australia 6 a.m. But another nation will be uh, changing. Please adjust this Sunday. And yesterday, um, Mr. Bender also mentioned about a Christian clergy. And I mentioned about that. So Oceania, now we are preparing to establish um, Oceania clergy leadership, how we can guide or gather the Oceania Christian ministers. We will have several activities about interface. So interface is centering the UPF. But beside of that, how we can gather and guide the Christian minister group. Because Oceania, one of the target group is our Christian ministries. That's why our first target is 40 Christian clergy. How we can gather and guide and testify our three parents. And 70 people, 120 people, 430 people, and finally 14,400 people. We can continuously guiding or educate. Each nation or each region, there is a specialty. And there is also the prepared person but even they are waiting for us. If we don't share or we don't approach, they could not connect with our heavenly parents and true parents. So which field we can testify and we can guide the people is important. In the religious way or multi racial way, and media or academia side, or family side, or art side, or youth side. Maybe each of us have a specialty, or a target, or a good point. You like reality media side, or art side, then we can involve those, those field. Even also ambassador for peace is same. So of course there is number, but beside of numbers, Important things is how make a relationship one on one deeply with artistic relationship and also share that to the parents. And if we can guide them, if we call now, heaven is calling. If now, true parents is calling, please come. So, how many people we can call those kind of artistic person? So, that kind of relationship we should create with them with heart and also the education and the contents together. That's why if we can create those kind of uh, artistic relationship with our leaders and our peoples, then this is one of the foundation and starting point. So let's create those culture and develop together for our heavenly parents and true parents. Thank you. So yesterday, 
Uh, we saw our contents about preparation of holy wedding ceremony by true father, 1957, 1958, 1959. And many people dreamed dream. And even Timonim had dream. And Timonim shared the meaning of dream or contents of dream. The phoenix descending from heaven, this is representing of true father. And also phoenix rising from the earth, this is represent of true mother. So Timonim realized this point. But Timonim still doesn't know who is true mother. So today, uh, let's continue. Let's see to continue the next part. In the month following my 16th birthday, I matured quickly and it caught people's attention at church. Members would mention that I looked elegant and neat. I would hear someone say, Hakcha is peaceful and virtuous. She is like a crane, befitting her name. And another, she is also very polite. And if you watch, you will see she is very observant and has clear judgment. I stood out when I was with members of the congregation. People commented that I had an untamed purity that I was one with God's will and that I had embraced the virtue of obedience through the difficulties I had endured in North Korea. Hearing such comments, I disciplined myself not to feel proud or act carelessly. When true mother grew up, when true mother became maturing, it caught people's attention at church. So that time true mother was 16 years old. So how people were watching her and getting an impression from her. Even she was young, just 16 years old. But when we see our, our when we see the true mother's life, how was true mother's life course? Just for 16 years life life course and so, so much short time, but from the beginning of her, her life, she was living under the Japanese occupation, under the World War II, and she overcame many kinds of trial and suffering. And even North Korean Communist Army attacked the South Korea. And through mother and family escaped from North to South, and even living in, in Seoul because of Korean War. When she was eight years old, she should have escaped from the soul to the city and moving around several places. So continuously through mother's life is moving and overcoming and challenging life. So this just 16 years old, 16 years small girl, but the experience which she experienced was very deep or so many things. That's why when people saw our true mother, true people could feel this true mother's character and also feeling is different. And true mother herself also tried to keep her discipline. I disciplined myself not to feel proud or act carelessly. More than anything else for his bride-to-be, Father Moon was looking for a person with a sacrificial and devoted heart of living for others. He did not care about family background, economic status, or appearance. She had to be a woman with absolute faith who could love the world. She had to be a woman who could conceive of saving the world because he had been unable to find such a woman. There had been no marriage of the lamb. He still did not fully know that heavenly bride who would become the mother of heaven, 
earth and humankind was close by. I had come to understand God's will, but was not going to say anything. To recognize the bride was Father Moon's mission and responsibility. So what is the qualification of as the true mother? What's the standard which true father was looking for? This is not the family background. This is not the economic situation, status, and appearance. Just the person who loves the world and the person who can sacrifice for the saving the world with absolute faith. And true father's marriage itself, true father marriage itself is also not for him, his personal himself. True father's marriage also offer for God and offer for the public. There is no own concept and own thinking. True father just offer himself to seek who is the prepared person by heaven and who can fulfill the providence and mission together to save the people and save the world. Only this one thinking true father had that time. And true mother, when she saw true father or child situation, which they are looking for, the true father's bride, true mother just prepared her heart and waiting that moment. So as the Messiah and as the second coming, True father have to find bride by his responsibility and his role. That's why this moment was also very important for our true father. The heavenly bride. A short time later, Mrs. Oh Yon Chun, the devout member who had taken in my mother, went to her job in a clothing store on the second floor of the Norian No One building in central Seoul. She assisted the store owner at making garments. The owner was a longtime member we called the prayer grandmother. When Mrs. O arrived, the owner was sewing together a man's suit. Mrs. O sat next to her as she pumped the wheel of the sewing machine and asked casually, Oh, who is the suit for? So this is talking about Mrs. O and owner of sewing machine. So this owner is making some kind of suit. So just conversation happened with that person. This suit is for Father Moon was the grandmother's answer. He is going to wear it at his engagement ceremony. Mrs. O packed up immediately and her eyes widened as she asked the natural question, who is to be the bride? Well, replied the grandmother nonchalantly. The day of the engagement has been decided, but the bride hasn't been chosen yet. However, the ceremony is going to be held soon, and so I am making this suit. So this already preparation was going on, and this person also prepared the suit for Father Moon that time. All preparation, but people curious, because still people doesn't know who will become the bride of our true father. Mrs. O's mind was buzzing, buzzing. Who is going to be the bride? She pondered the question, but couldn't come up with any possibilities. Mrs. O was a person who often had God's voice in revelation. In fact, she had been offering prayerful devotions for seven years for the sake of the appearance of the true, true mother. She right away took her question to God in prayer, and she received a revelation because Eve fell when she was 16 years old. Heavenly bride needs to be younger than 20. So this person, Mrs. O, was longtime friend with Temonim from North, 
and spiritual person. So she said she offered a prayer for seven years. So seven years ago, meaning is around 1952, many people were looking for the second coming or second advent. Who become the second coming? And who is the second Jesus? Many people are thinking only second coming or Jesus. But this Mrs. O already praying for the bride, the second coming's wife and true mother. So I think this person is also a spiritual person who become the true mother. Already she was praying for. Then she received the liberation. The person should be younger than 20 years old. This had never occurred to her before. It was only then that she understood the logic of God's will. She asked God again and again, who is the heavenly bride who is younger than 20? And before long, she thought of me. I know Hak Chahan, who is around 16. She said to herself, she often sits right next to me in church. Why didn't I think of her? Could it really be her? So realization. If one realization and one realization and one realization, if few realizations come together, then suddenly people could see the overall picture. This person, this Mrs. O, pray for seven years, continuously pray. And that time, Trivada was 39 years old and how many people were praying for true father so through dream the dream true father was true father was 39 years old that's a mrs o was praying maybe similar ages with true father true father 39 years old then maybe the bride true mother should be around 39 or 36 or 45, maybe Mrs. O was praying like this. But when she received the revelation, this bride should be younger than 20 years old. Then suddenly she could see the new persons who are under 16, under 20 years old. And she realized there is 16 years old person just beside of her. And she realized Kakchahan, a mother, true mother, is right condition of this person. So liberation. How about about you? Maybe you could experience you will dream, you will receive liberation. So each single liberation is maybe small contents and could not recognize by one thinking. But when get one liberation, they suddenly could see the another world and another view and another vision. When we see our Noah, Noah just received the one small liberation, but with this liberation, he offered the whole life. So how we can catch the point through liberation, how we can recognize or realize through one dream and one liberation which heaven gives, this is important as our portion of responsibility. That's why Johnson and also our heart is important. At 10 a.m. that evening, Mrs. O was making her way home. After finishing her work, she was on the Norianjin bus as it was crossing the Han River when God spoke to her. It will be Hakcha. It will be Hakcha. God's revelation descended upon Mrs. O like a wave of energy in the autumn night sky. She arrived in her neighborhood around 11 p.m., but instead of going home, she hurried to see my mother who lived near her. So heaven gave the revelation to Mrs. O. This person is, will be Hakcha. It will be Hakcha. So how much she was excited that moment. And after he drove, he went to meet Temunim.
And she said, Sune, are you sleeping? Not yet, come in. How old is your daughter? My mother gave her a puzzled look. Mrs. O had skipped all formalities and asked a point blank question. Why are you visiting me in the middle of the night to ask me how old my daughter is? Don't change the subject, please just tell me. She is 16, turning 17 next year. When is her birthday? She was born in 1943, on the sixth day of the first lunar month. She has the same birthday as our master. Why are you suddenly asking me such questions? Mrs. O and my mother were old friends. They were the same age and they had attended the same church in the hometown in North Korea. In addition, their mothers were very close friends. So Mrs. O and Temonim was longtime friend. Even their parents was close friend and working together in North Korean time. So from North Korea, they are very long time friend and working together. And my mother, in fact, was living in Norianjin across the street from Mrs. O. Mrs. O had found this place for my mother when she had fallen into poor health while doing her church work just as abruptly as she had arrived. Mrs. O bid my mother good night and departed, leaving my mother to figure out what was on her mind. So Mrs. O realized something. This person who is Hak Chahan, who is the daughter of Temonim, and listened to all the information, and she realized and she had confirmation something inside of herself and she went back to the house. So we can see how much she was excited and what kind of story is going on that place. The next day, as soon as it became light, Mrs. O was on her way back to work at the Nakwon building. God's revelation about me completely distracted her and the work day came and went without her realizing what she was doing. When she finished her work, she went directly to see a fortune teller. To this day, Koreans often consult fortune tellers for guidance about marriage. And that's what Mrs. O did. She described to the fortune teller the two persons about whom she was consulting without mentioning their names right away, the fortune teller's eye widened. So fortune teller, that time uh, in Korea, people like to do the fortune tellers. How about our Australia, New Zealand, and our Oceania families? You do also fortune teller something? You don't do? Uh, in Korea, for example, Chinese character. This Chinese character, how many Chinese character? 10, 12, and five. So this name, four Chinese character, three, four, 10, or eight, or another Chinese character, and also birthday. Chinese character and birthday together, and then they could see this person's future, they, this person's life is going well, going difficult. This person is more active style, more emotional style, or this kind of faith they have. And this person, this person meet together, what kind of couple they will be. So those kind of fortune teller, even current, currently, many Korean is doing like this. I don't know, Japanese maybe also doing. This Chinese character culture, they are doing. That's why immediately this Mrs. O visited to the fortune teller and show their name and birthday. And fortune teller, right away, fortune teller's eye widened. There may be large gap between the ages of these two persons, but it doesn't matter. They are a match made in heaven. I have rarely seen such a couple whose fortunes are so aligned. Mrs. O felt her heart was about to explode. She calmed herself and went directly to the church to meet our teacher and tell him everything. 
as soon as she gained a private space with him, she, she blotted it out. Hakchahan, the daughter of Honsune, is the heavenly bride. She waited for a response, but Father Moon didn't say a word. He had listened to many members suggest who might be his bride, and none of them had paid much attention to me. So that time, that time many people is thinking who become the bride. And even many people is suggesting, and even many women. True Father said, that moment, even 70 years old lady, they said, I am the bride. 60 years old lady, 50 years old lady, 40 years old lady, 30 years, 20 years, 10 years, all lady thought, I am the bride of teacher moon. So everyone come and telling the true father and also approaching. So many kind of atmosphere was happening that moment. Can you imagine? Now Messiah is here, our respected father is here, and many people are waiting for that moment. I am the one who become the bride. So this moment we can really could imagine. I don't know if there is opportunity as our old ladies, if true father is looking for the bride, you want to become the candidate of, of the true mother? You want to become the wife of true father? Maybe that moment, they, they didn't know so much what's the role, but many ladies was excited and I want to become the bride. That much, our true father was so much charismatic and also uh, the really uh, grateful person and showing how much uh, really the admired person. So anyway, today, uh, many kind of sharing about Mrs. O. That's why I just read that all contents. But that moment, many people are receiving the revelation. And Mrs. O especially received the revelation from heaven directly. Heaven's bride should be younger than 20 years old. And she realized, he, she realized this person is the Hakcha. That's why even Many people is telling the true father, I am the bride, I am the bride, I am the bride. But she received the direct liberation from heaven and she visited the true father and she shared this kind of liberation. So today I will share about all liberation and dream. How many things or situation was happen at the moment. Maybe we can imagine 1959, all people are waiting True mother, waiting bright and true father, just listening and prayer and prayer and prayer. And true mother herself also same. She received some liberation and she had some kind of feeling, but of course she could not say anything. Just she was waiting for that moment. So how we can realize, how we can fulfill our responsibilities, how we can offer ourselves and how we can catch the meaning of heaven behind the liberation and behind the behind the dream we could learn also several matters so we can imagine again the moment is coming and crossing and crossing and crossing the moment to father and to mother meet together so we pray for that and we find that heart of true father that moment, true mother that moment, and our heavenly parents at that moment. And also we can celebrate and we can connect our heart and we can put our simjong and love. So today also thank you for uh, joining this movement. When we see our life itself also, we have many kind of liberation and connection. We will connect our heart with our heavenly parents, offer the victory, and offer the happiness to our happy parents, true parents, our brother and sisters. Thank you very much. Come Samida. Thank you very much, Reverend Yutaka. Thank you. Yeah, always uh, amazing to hear about our true mother and her life and this time when it was so exciting, who is going to be uh, father's 
bride who's going to be the mother of heaven. And I, I can imagine that they're all uh, thinking that they would be it because they joined early and they, they loved father so much, all the women, and I'm sure they were waiting. And, and I'm sure they found it curious, you know, why, why doesn't father know who it is? Uh, and I, I wondered myself, yeah, I mean, I, I tend to think that uh, that, that story before uh, where father mentioned mother's name three times when she was 13, I tend to think that he, you know, God was already starting to tell father, yeah, and he was starting to recognize who she was, but the, the members didn't know and they had people receiving these revelations and then yeah, it, it's an exciting time. Uh, it it uh, uh, reminded me when you mentioned about how Koreans you know, go to a fortune teller to seek, uh, uh, you know, who's going to be the bride and, and or what the fortunes or what do these two people fit? Uh, it, it, usually in Western countries, they're not so much uh, to do about fortune tellers, but my background is Greek. And my parents both came from a small island called Gastelorizo, which was very, very traditional and more traditional than mainland Greece. And so on the island, there were fortune tellers and uh, or uh, clairvoyants. Or, and actually, my mother was one of those people. And she used to read tea leaves. And people would come to her uh, to find out about her, her fortune or their fortunes for their family. I didn't know about it till I was very young in Australia because I was born here and, and someone came and I was very, I can't remember, six or seven, you know, the first time someone came to ask my mother to read uh, the, the tea leaves for them. Uh, and then later my sister became a clairvoyant as well, my elder sister, and she started uh, doing uh, people's fortunes as well. And I just started to think it was uh, normal and I had this experience uh, uh, with my mum and, and my my uh, uh, my elder sister. How, because they were spiritually open, they could they could uh, uh, try to uh, understand people. And and I had this feeling when I was very young that they were trying to go into my head to find out what I was thinking. And I I remember saying to my sister, "Stop doing that. You know, just keep keep to yourself." Uh, and <laughs> so, so it's just a funny experience. Uh, it was just, it was just reminding me uh, how uh, people do want to know the future, but I always avoided it big time. I, I'm not, not interested to know. Uh, but I had the, uh, when I was a teenager, uh, uh, just, I can't remember where, on a bus or somewhere, this random lady comes up to me and says, you know, in the future, you're going to marry a traditional Asian. I said, what? Go away. So, I th so, so interesting things happen like that and how people know uh, or seem to know things uh, about the future. So, yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, who, <laughs> thank you. So who'd like to share some experience they have or understanding or realisation? Oh. Yes, Jacinta Derbyshire, go ahead. I've had two experiences with spiritualists. Uh, first one was uh, just after I joined, I met this gypsy and she said to me, um, you'll be in this church for 16 years and then you'll leave. And um, I thought, no, that couldn't possibly happen, you know. And um, after 16 years, I actually uh, left the centre because all the married couples were moving back into their own homes. So her uh, prediction came true, but in a very different way to what I took it. So I thought that was interesting. But the second time, uh, the second experience was uh, just in 2000 and, uh, yeah, in year, year 2000, I um, went... Uh, June's dad had just died, uh, Kurt Jeed, and um, uh, I was in Adelaide and we were going to go over 
to Melbourne for the funeral. And we've got a very good friend who's a spiritualist in Adelaide. And so we went there and um, um, we asked about, uh, actually there's two reasons for going, sorry, two reasons. The actual reason I was going was because Ian and I were deciding whether we should uh, sell up our house and go around the world and um, visit Jardim and all that. And it was a big decision. So we asked this friend, um, you know, can we just ask our ancestors what they think? And so I, I went thinking that it was just going to be about, you know, our, whether we should sell up the house or not. Um, which I did find out dad's, my dad came to me and gave his opinion. And, um, but it, at the meantime, uh, before dad came through, uh, Kurt's, Kurt came through and uh, I was just about, we were just about to get in the car and go to Melbourne. It was the next day we we're going to go to Melbourne. And, uh, yeah, so Kurt came through and told, told me to tell Noriko, you know, to not worry about him and stuff like that. So that was, that was really interesting. <laughs> and um, also, my, you know, I asked my dad whether he thought it was a good idea to sell up and go to go to Jardim. And he said, oh, no, he said, that's a really, no, he said, if you do that, you'll be financially suffering for quite a long time, <laughs> which is a very practical answer. Uh, which happened actually, uh, but I decided to go ahead and with, do whatever I wanted to do anyway. I just just wanted to check in with Dad, you know, to see what he thought. But then on top of that, he said, "Oh, by the way," he said, "Thank you so much uh, for your uh, for your study." This is what my dad said, and he hadn't said many good things about Reverend Moon in my life, except I couldn't have found a better husband for you. Uh, about Ian, <laughs> my dad said that, yay. But um, when uh, in the spirit, through this spiritualist, he said, I've had a very, uh, you know, I didn't really know much what I was going through in my life. Uh, I was, he was a pilot uh, in his life, was always teaching people how to fly. But he said, um, whenever you study and read out uh, read out aloud, like as in Hunduk, he said, all the lights come on uh, and I know where to land mm -hmm. because he's the kind of guy that used to fly at night and uh, he'd used to go by before radar, they used to go by lights. You know, he flew from England to Australia and Australia to England and without any radar, just using um, uh, lights on the ground, you know, if he was flying at night. He was a very adventurous person. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he said, when you study divine principle, all the lights come on. And I just, I feel like I've been flying through my life, you know, without any guidance or light. Now I can, I, now I can land. So that was the most beautiful testimony for me. And so uh, I'm always proud of my dad for doing that. <laughs> That's it. Thank you, Jacinta. Thank you. Uh, yes, Chris, go ahead. Uh, and then after Chris, Tony. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Um, not sure whether I should say this or not, but um, I've known half of this for a long time, but um, this morning I received just received the last half of this. And I think if we separate father's life into two sections, before and after Hyungnam and after Hyungnam, as him going through that as Jesus' course being crucified and resurrected, then I believe that Heavenly Parent wasn't 100% sure that he would survive all of those things until that. And so I believe that he was directed to marry and leave offspring behind because if he died, there was no way for God to go forward except with that. 
If we then look at him as being resurrected, as a new person, completely forget about everything after him then, all of the quotes start to make sense. All of the presidents starts to make sense from that point of view. Anyway, that's what I received and uh, maybe some official, uh, you know, recognition can come right or wrong, I don't know, but that was my, uh, that's what I've been working on for a while. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Okay, Tony, go ahead. Uh, somehow your sound but it is, can't hear you. Uh, yeah, not muted, but you need to just. No. No, that didn't work. Uh, you want to just check your, your down there where it's, you know, check what microphone's being used with inside your Zoom. Ah, sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, Jeff Byers, go ahead. <coughs> Uh, you haven't seen uh, Kenji and myself and Kathy and some others, maybe Kathy yesterday. We have been on our, part of our, our tour uh, to go around uh, New Zealand. <clears throat> it's our second tour. We went up to the Waitangi initially to the treaty grounds where 1840 a treaty was made with the Maori people. So this time we went down to the Bay, what we call Bay of Plenty. Uh, to meet, to go to historical sites and to meet the people there who have a foundation to talk to. <clears throat> um, anyway, uh, of course, um, things happen around us all the time. Spiritual things, connections are made and sometimes we're not aware of them. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so I just want to share just a few points. I just feel that uh, heaven sort of foreknows many things or possibilities. So that's why through mediums, they can kind of like guide us. And um, <clears throat> so when we went down to pray at the site where the Arawa canoe came in, the first Maori people to come and settle in New Zealand on mass, um, uh, we discovered there there was a, a site um, and it had been exactly 100 years after the Treaty of Waitangi that this site was made that we went to. So 1840, this one was established in 1940. So that was the second significant place we made a holy ground. Um, <clears throat> so um, we met down there also significant people to meet was uh, the site and gravesite of Sir Peter Tapsell was, he was kind of like a external leader of UPF for many years, met two parents, went to international conferences, very significant person uh, in New Zealand Providence. Historically, his uh, original ancestor was the first officially married couple, I think, in New Zealand, according to what we were told. I'm talking about a long, long time ago now. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> so we were escorted by a lady that we met there who had been to Palau and our women's conference. So we met her there. She was a relative of Sir Peter, unbeknown to us, even before she went to Palau. And so uh, she then took us to Sir Peter's gravesite. And um, so as we were standing there, we decided, okay, we're going to pray in front of the gravesite. And as we began the prayer, I got a telephone call on my cell phone. And I hadn't heard from this lady for a couple of years, and she was in America. And this was uh, Margaret Sisson from Palau. And so just as we, as I say, about to pray, she just randomly phoned me and said, what are you doing? So all these connections that I said, we're at the gravesite of Sir Peter Taps. And she said, well, I know Sir Peter. I met him in New Zealand and I met him in Korea. And then right beside us was a lady, Maori lady who had gone with us to <coughs> Palau, where, <laughs> I don't know if you're getting all these connections, but it was just like, uh, I don't know. 
Everything was absolutely perfect, right at this gravesite. Margaret's sisters in cold from Palau, from America, we met in Palau, and this lady that went to Palau for the women's conference was there, and there was Sir Peter Tapp. So we were all there together uh, with Kenji and myself just to pray together. So anyway, I, I'm not sure if you get all these connections, but we are so connected as a, as a movement, as individuals. Uh, we are just really completely uh, connected. Um, there was just, anyway, there are so many, like, what is going on as we do these tours, we are understanding so many things about the background of New Zealand, the history and the ancestors that we have been liberating, working with us to meet people and, and, and work with them. A small incident on the way back uh, yesterday, although there's many other spiritual connections, but we went to a house of a ambassador for peace, who is a Maori guy who went to Nepal with his, she's, he's married to a white lady, and they went to Nepal to our international conference there. And uh, so we went to his place, she had gone, she was off working and uh, so um, he uh, became an ambassador for peace and at that time uh, his name was like James. And in the interim time or during that time, he got a revelation. He needed to change his name to Elijah. And so anyway, he did. He explained, we asked him, why, why did you do that? And he said he got a revelation. He needs to change his name from James to Elijah. And um, if he did, discovered his name, James was connected to some ancestors who had, had bad fortune. And so he decided he didn't want to connect it to them because he felt that the name is important. So he decided to call himself Elijah. So anyway, as you know, from our point of view, Elijah is the one who needs to testify to the, to the Messiah. So anyway, he, of course, he being a peace ambassador needs to testify to the Messiah. So anyway, many unusual phenomena happen around us um, that we can uh, test, you know, we can... Uh, we can kind of like understand how the spirit world is working with us to guide us and prepare us for our mission. Anyway, just a few words. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Is that Abel trying to, did you put your hand up there, Abel? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yeah, I uh, just want to reflect on the reading that we have uh, been uh, uh, read. And uh, I just want to reflect because there is a saying that our grandparents, before they haven't uh, have a good education, but what they say is that we have to stand and we have to always look to the east because there is a blessing that will come out from the East. But, you know, other than they, they, they haven't have a good education, they haven't have a, they haven't go to church. They are just living uh, traditionally. Microphone. And uh, they have that message. And uh, for my uh, viewpoints, as uh, 2007, Awesome. Uh, awesome. Hang on, uh, Tony. Actually, your mic is working now. So, can you? Can you yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, somehow, the uh, father cannot make it. So, true mother is the one that uh, have come to Fanwadi, and uh, I'm always thinking, praying for that. Why is uh, true father haven't made it to Fanwadi and true mother came to Fanwadi? And uh, as we're going through reading all this uh, through mother's autobiography, I can feel something that uh, uh, we have to change. Like we have to be, we are really grateful to have our true parents here, to mother here. So there's a way forward that we can uh, really achieve all our goals if we can connect our hearts to God and our beloved true parents. Yeah, I think that's all. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Abel. Okay, Tony, you've been wanting to share. Uh, it sounded like your mic was working, so give it a go. Um, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, okay. Just very quickly, because I know we're running out of time. Um, 
going back to the 19, on this topic of uh, sort of revelation, anyway, <clears throat> going back to the 1980s, I was working in, in Britain on a farm. Uh, Ian was also there. And um, I went home at Christmas time, uh, 19, <clears throat> uh, 1980, and I was with my parents. And uh, while I was there, I had this dream, very clear dream. <laughs> And, um, and I woke up and then I had breakfast with my parents, with my mum. I said to my mother, last night I dreamt of my future wife. And um, she said, oh, how nice. Uh, what does she look like? <laughs> so, you know, how mothers are. <laughs> and uh, so I described this young lady. And, um, and then I had no idea that the matching was going to take place in a few days time. I just went home for a break from the farm using the farm vehicle anyway uh so i told her you know about this this dream and she said oh yeah lovely you know and <clears throat> so then of course i went back to the farm uh, which was about four hour three or four hour drive and then they were saying tony where have you been you've got to get on a plane and go to america there's a, a matching taking place so i said all oh, right okay so i got to london and then i got on a plane and um, uh, and sure enough, I got matched to that lady, uh, that young lady, um, what? Uh, the folk, you know, who I'd seen in the dream. It was so clear. And I don't normally tell my parents, you know, I had a dream about my future wife. Uh, but interestingly, at the, the matching, um, when True Father actually came to match us, uh, uh, us all, um, I got a picture matching. And within about 10 minutes uh, of each other, Ian got matched to Jacinta, and there was also Brian Fielder got matched, and myself, all within about 10 minutes of each other. And the three brothers were working at the farm, and our three sisters, the three sisters knew each other very clearly uh, from Oceana time. And uh, that was amazing also. And um, anyway, very short experience, but <laughs> right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. So yes, it is that time for us to uh, join together in unison prayer. So I'll just uh, change the screen. Uh, just bear with me. Uh, and I will. Let's begin.
Adieu, adieu, adieu. Thank you, everyone. It's been a, a great day already. So I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, bye bye. Thank you. Have a good day. Yeah, bye. 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 Everyone, God bless everyone.